Hey guys, my name is Jessie Mew, and welcome back to Whale Island. In the last episode, our oracles discovered a little hidden oasis to call their very own. So now, Bree finally has a nice quiet place to do all of her work. She actually can't talk herself, so I've always figured that our oracles probably work better in the silence. So this little oasis is going to be the perfect place for them. Her tribe mates weren't really too interested in learning her language either. Her little antenna language. Nobody except for Dimitri, at least, who has the antennas too. So I think they'll make pretty good exploring partners. Maybe as she works her way toward the jungles, because I'm sure she is very intrigued by all of those curly weeds. Oh my gosh, and can you imagine if Solera saw those? If he takes a trip over to the Oracle's Oasis, I bet he's going to want to bring some of those back for Zoe. Right now, he's carrying some of these twigs, and they have those strange little flowers on them, so maybe he'd be carrying it as a little bouquet to give to her when he lands back on the shore. But right now, we are about to witness a baby boom in the tribe, and fingers crossed we're going to be seeing quite a few wings pop up on our babies. This is going to be the very last baby between King Barbas and Queen Inara, so this one right here is super special too. Maybe this baby will even be blessed by King Barbas' spirit. I think everybody is all tired out though. We did have a very big day in the last episode, so let's zoom in right here and see if maybe King Barbas is going to pull through for us. <gasps> oh my gosh, I think he did! Oh, we have the cutest little ladybug in the nest. Oh my goodness, and she even has the tail fin too. So she's a flying mermaid, you guys. Oh, she'll be able to take to the trees and sing loud and proud to try to lure more wanderers to the mermaids. Oh my goodness, Dasher. I think you may have just lost out on your chance to attract any more attention to your kingdom. This little one is going to be quite the sight to behold. Can you imagine her swooping through the skies, doing acrobats like a fish underwater? You know, she's going to be very interesting for us to follow. So the next name on my list is Lizzie. Welcome to our tribe, little one. And now let's go check and see if your nieces and nephews had the same sort of luck. Well, it certainly looks like they may have. We have two purse notes, and the one right back here appears to have both of those wings too. So I guess Solaris is going to have quite a bit on his paws when he gets back. He's going to have to teach two little babies how to soar around in the skies just like him. But I think he'll be happy, because now that we have a new little mermaid baby in our midst, she's probably the most likely to take over the throne. We know that Solaris really wanted to keep exploring, keep finding all of those new places and treasures to bring back to Zoe, so now he doesn't have to be worried about getting contained to the throne. He won't be trapped there at least. So let's check out this baby next, with her amazing stinky tail. Oh my gosh, she is an adorable fluffy flying cat, even with the ram horns too. So that means she should be able to take down bunnies if she decides to go hunting. The next name on my list is Mist, so welcome to our tribe too. And then as for your brother over here, oh, a little catfish. Oh my goodness, if only he had that second wing, then he could have been a flying catfish. But at least that means we're getting closer. It's nice to know that the mermaids are still living strong in our tribe. I was afraid that the tail fin was going to die out because it seemed like it was a little bit difficult to pass on to our babies. But your name is going to be Firestar, so welcome to our tribe too. Quite fitting because I'm pretty sure that's a warrior cat name. Not 100% sure because I don't know the lore too well. But if it is, then the purse now is perfect for you. Oh my gosh, so we better get Solaris over here as fast as possible. He has his gift to drop off for Zoe first, but we might need to have some of our creatures over here help guide him. In fact, if we bring Akira to this side of the berry bush, oh my goodness, 
Hello, rogue male friend. Uh, thankfully we don't have any females around here, so nobody to snag your attention. But I don't think Akira is going to take too kindly to intruders. Something tells me that this guy was probably hoping to build a home right under the tree, thanks to all of its shade and its shelter. But once he saw Solera swooping through the sky, he couldn't resist coming out to see who was building a home here too. So unfortunately for you, Akira is going to send you packing. Oh, and it looks like the leeches are back as well. Oh no. Poor little Rarer. She was waiting for Kylo to come down here and try out the water-breathing plant. But it looks like we're going to have to save her instead. So let's have Magnus make his way to the shore. That way he can guide his son straight over to the water plant. I guess if we have Rarera light up the way too, he should be able to jump straight down into the ocean and gobble that plant up. So now you guys can go diving, I guess? One final time before she passes away? Though I wonder if we might want to try having one more baby between them. Maybe one more oracle baby, so we could have a trio over by the oasis. Yeah, we might as well give it a shot. We'll leave a rare right by the shore, however so she can still go diving on the next turn. Assuming that this breeding works, however, and assuming that somebody else can come down here to help her out with that leech. I suppose Marco could always be the one. He's kind of been drifting on the outskirts anyway, helping everybody that he comes across, but never really finding himself a permanent home. All of his plans seem to crumble, and I think especially after losing the love of his life to King Barbas. He's just been really down on his luck. He's actually showing off the tail fin today too. As you can see in his portrait, he usually has a scorpion tail. So Marco the Manticore is being particularly tricky today. And I wonder if that might have anything to do with Barbas' influence. Maybe he wonders if he could have captured Anara's heart. If he only showed off his tail fin instead of his scorpion tail. Oh, I wonder if he wants to come down the shore and meet her again. They're getting so close to the ends of their lives. But if we can maybe guide him through the darkness, maybe they can meet up one last time before they pass. For now, we'll have Anara just pick up the grass around her. Make sure that her new little baby Lizzie is very, very safe. Because she's going to be taking over the tribe before long. And is our rogue male friend still sticking around too? Well, it looks like he is injured. Not by very much, though. Unfortunately, despite your poison, you are not the strongest individual. And nobody over here is going to be able to do much more damage than you. So I guess we'll just have to cross our fingers that the rogue male doesn't make his way to the stream. Because that's where he could end up finding some of our females instead. If he does decide to follow Solaris too, that could be a bit of an issue, so you'll just have to watch your back, little bird. But I'm sure he's grateful that Akira was able to guide him safely to the shores. Now he could actually pass the word to our scorpion babies, who are not quite such little babies anymore. Last time he came across Chaos and Samuel, they were very young and they were all on their own. But he knows that Akira and Sirius need a lot of help over here. And he knows that with those scorpion tails, they should make for very, very good chirps. But what he doesn't know is that this family comes from a line of tricksters. And Van Karen never took too kindly to imposters. While they might not have the magic of illusions on their side, they are still very, very mischievous. So we'll have to see how all of these creatures end up getting along. Well, Solaris, now would be the perfect time for you to maybe make a gap between these territories so the rogue male doesn't end up following us. You can scoot on over here, land right next to Zoe, and offer her up that little bouquet of twigs and flowers. She's always happy to accept more of your treasures, your little trinkets from all of your adventures. And not only that, but these will actually make pretty good nesting material. So I wonder if she's starting to get that idea in her mind too. Maybe she would like to start a family with the first bird of our tribe. Despite his adventurous ways, 
He's the one who has returned to her time after time again. While Pika, on the other hand, is a bit too distracted with all of his coconuts. Let's have him scoop these up. And then hopefully we can scoot him over to the other side. Now, if I remember correctly, the coconuts didn't fall down on these tiles before. So let's see if he'll be any more successful on the next turn. He'll use that tiny little bit of knowledge to his advantage. And we'll see if he can manage to pull through. Now it looks like you may have found a little bunny. Oh, stealing from the Oracle's Oasis. Well, little guy, that simply won't do. We'll have to make sure that Dimitri is keeping a very close eye on this one from here on out. Because that's going to be their main source of food. They're both very, very good at collecting and not so much at hunting. And speaking of which, we'll want to make sure that nothing dangerous is inside the jungle. It's a very tiny place. But that doesn't mean that something dangerous couldn't have spawned inside those tiles. So let's have Bree make her way very carefully into the tall grass, pick up some of those extra weeds, and then sniff around too, just in case. So far, so good. It looks like you might be free to go even deeper. Oh my goodness. And now you've found a little pile of debris too. It looks like there's flowers and leaves mixed in there. You know, we're gonna have to have Solaris fly is way over here. Oh my goodness, we do have a carnivorous plant. Oh, Bree, thank goodness you sniffed around. If Solaris flew over here, then he might have actually gotten gobbled up instead. So you'll have to make sure that the other adventurous little birds don't wander too close to the jungles either. Now that she's the only one who knows the true danger of the jungles, our oracles are going to have yet another task on their hands. Well, let's have Ryuka at least clear out this area a bit more. This was where the Baryinas spawned before, so I suppose that means that more could always be coming out looking for revenge. Now are we just down to you guys back here? Oh, as you hunt down your bunnies and your moles. Well, lucky for you, little one, Hockey is only interested in the moles out this way. So we'll have to see if he can scoop up some more in Mole Metropolis. We would normally have Serena go after the bunny, but this time I think she's going to return to Dasher's side. Now we're getting quite close to the point where this kingdom is just going to die off. Dasher is on his final five days, and Serena is too. And without anybody here to continue their bloodline, I think desperate times are knocking on their door. So while it's not the ideal situation, because these two do have a similar immunity gene, so their babies could end up sick, I think it's the only way that we'll be able to continue our peacock family. I was considering having Serena breed with Hockey instead, since they've been traveling together for so long, and since they both do seem to enjoy hunting, but I think it would be a better idea just for the peacock gene to breed with Dasher instead. He is guaranteed to pass that to his babies after all. So as long as we fill her mutation menu with the peacock tail, I think it's quite likely that we'll see it on some of her sons. Oh, and of course we did unlock a new gene too, but because 50 days have passed, I'm almost positive that should be the fertility. Yeah, the normal fertility unlocks after 50 days and then the high fertility after 100. So that might be a good thing for us to use in the future. It looks like quite a few of our creatures have some infertile genes anyways, so we'll just keep a close eye on that too. But while the mermaids can now boast for their wings, I think Dasher is going to have to take a bit of a different approach. None of our other creatures are quite strong right now, so maybe it would be a good idea to place something like the claw into his mutation menu. Do you think that would maybe attract some wanderers? Creatures who are looking for protection, rather than to watch the shows of our mermaids as they sing and fly through the skies? Maybe Dasher's family can attract all of the roaming warriors, the creatures who are just looking for a grand place to call home. So on the next turn, 
We'll have him breed with Serena, and we'll cross our fingers that they won't end up being too sick. But otherwise, I think we're ready to skip the day. We want to make sure that Sugar is keeping a close watch over the babies after all. They're not quite ready to stretch their wings just yet. So I guess we could go over here and see if hopefully Rorera's baby will have the Oracle's antennas just like his siblings. Though unfortunately it looks like he doesn't have anything at all. But that being said, he does have some very adorable stripes. Oh, he is super cute. Oh my gosh, and he has a fishing tail too? Wait a second. I don't think any of his siblings have the fishing tail, right? It's just him? Oh my goodness, little one. You might actually be pretty good at diving too, then. It gives him a plus two in fishing, at least. So he won't be able to swipe up the piranhas. But he could help his brother Kylo find some really good fish to eat. We'll just have to see if Kylo and his mother can find another one of these water-breathing plants. That way he should be able to scoop down into the ocean just like his siblings. But as for you, the next name on my list is Ash. So welcome to our tribe, little one. Very fitting as well, thanks to his ashy colored mane and those gray stripes on his back. You're gonna blend in pretty well in the water, I guess. Those almost look like little ripples. So maybe the fish won't even notice you swimming. But with Magnus on the shore to watch after her baby, I think Rarera is going to want to dive straight into the ocean. She's on her very final day. She can get her revenge on all of the leeches. And she can show little Kylo how to swim. Now he's not the best at it. He doesn't have the water body like she does. But that's why it would probably be a good idea to breathe that onto our babies. And they'll help us out anyway by swimming around like this because every single action will work toward unlocking it in our mutation menu. And it looks like she did find another one of these water-breathing plants right before she passed away. This one is still definitely safer for our landbound creatures to pick from, so I think we'll want to wait till that one regrows. But your adventures in the sea will happen before long, little Ash. I think you have a lot of stories to tell. So I guess that means that Marco can maybe think about making his way down the shore. Yeah, we'll see if he can hopefully meet up with Inara one last time, now that he has this grand tail fin to show for it. Oh, isn't she going to be shocked? He is certainly not the Marco that she remembers, and she thought very highly of him too. She may have chosen Barbas instead for his grand looks, but Marco was always right by her side to help her along. So she considers him to be a very, very good friend. Now the only problem, little Lizzie, is that you won't be able to crack open these coconuts like your father could. I'm not sure if you have anyone around who could help you with the job. I suppose we could always call Zed over. Maybe your little brother wouldn't mind helping. There are plenty of capable cracker chaws on this side of the island after all, so I don't think you have to worry about all of those acorns. We'll bring you right over here, so you can feed your little sister as soon as you're not so tired. You know, these two would actually work pretty well together anyways as a team. When Lizzie has the energy to hop on these trees, she should be able to knock down plenty of acorns for him to collect. Of course, Solaris will have to show her the way, but first, we want to make sure that we set up their mutation menus right for their babies. We need to have the ram horns on our winged creatures so they can actually attack. I feel like that is the one downside to having two wings, because it means that you're sacrificing your strength for the flying power. Though that being said, if you can just hop away from danger, I guess there wouldn't really be a reason. It just comes down to those pesky bunnies because we need to make sure that our creatures can actually do some hunting too. And then as for you, I think we might go with the white fur again. That way your babies might work for our future penny cat too. So go ahead and breed with Solaris, and then we'll have you settle down right in the permanent nest, spreading all of those lovely little twigs around the nest, the flowers and the bouquet, and the bunny fluff too. 
Interestingly enough, all of the things that he brought back work very well as nesting material. Maybe this was his plan all along, but I know you'll want to fly your way straight over here so you can see the other new winged creatures of the tribe, all those who will eventually join Solaris's school for flying. Maybe we could even scoot Sugar out of the way so the babies can meet their new teacher. And oh my goodness. I mean, just for a moment, look at how far Solaris can actually fly. Once again, he could fly straight up here to the Peacock Kingdom, or he could go all the way down to the shores. He could hop up on any one of these trees, even the one way over by the Oracle's Oasis. Oh, Solaris, you just have the entire world at your fingertips. It's no wonder you love exploring so much. Oh, it looks like that may have unlocked us a new gene too. Let's just take a quick peek inside here to see. Oh, was that the bird beak? I think we did have to do a little bit of flying for that one. So maybe you unlocked the bird beak for us after all. We were actually hoping that maybe the bird beak would get pulled out of Ryuga's genetics. So we'll have to see if we can have some more babies between sugar and shortcake. But for now, they have plenty on their hands and they have plenty of expanding to do. So let's make sure this area is all nice and clear so your babies will have a nice big area to fly around in. We can bring Ryuga up this way to pick the berries. We'll have Sugar pick up all of this extra grass. And now you guys should be free to really stretch your wings as soon as you have your second gem. Solaris knows from experience how hard it is to wait for that day. He wanted to soar up into the skies as soon as he opened his eyes too. But we'll have to make sure that Bree is calling Dimitri over to this area. Now that she knows how dangerous it actually is. She needs to make sure that it's all cleared out so nobody accidentally stumbles into this carnivorous plant. The babies will be particularly vulnerable to its tricks. So these two will have to work very, very fast. Now, Pika, now that you're about to be left all alone again by your family, as Chaos and Samuel make their way to Van Geer's troops, let's see if you can at least find a way to sustain yourself. We'll have you scoot on over here, try knocking down some more acorns. Oh no, or coconuts rather. This was the only tile that wasn't hit. You were just one away, little pika. This poor guy is trying his hardest to learn the secrets of the coconut tree. But I think unless he finds himself a little winged buddy, he won't be having his coconut feast anytime soon. So maybe that's where he's going to set his sights next. Our little trickster is going to be watching the nest of Zoe to see if maybe he can lure one of our winged babies to his cause. Now Sirius, you're about to have some visitors of your own, so you better make sure this place is nice and clean. Make sure all the bunnies are staying away from your food as the rogue males invade once more. Well, this would be a good way for Chaos and Samuel to show their stuff. We could have them lunge in and hopefully surround the rogue male so they should be able to chase him out of their territory once and for all. Van Keer's troops are clearly a ruthless bunch, but with so many precious resources in their midst, I guess you can understand why they'd be very, very cautious. Akira, you might have to block off his advances of this way and then send him straight into the sea. Well, I guess that's one way to do it. Maybe he'll just migrate to a completely different island. As long as he's not bugging us anymore, then I suppose it doesn't even matter. So Dasher, now is your chance to hopefully start a tiny little family. And fingers crossed that they won't end up being super sick. We'll have Serena settle down a nest right next to your throne. That way you can still use your extra energy to call out for wanderers. Though it would appear that the island is still not impressed with your ways of singing. Well, hopefully a little bit of fortune will smile down on this family. I guess it's all that they really have left to look forward to. Hockey though, you are really going to spend the last of your days? Oh my goodness. Chasing after the moles? 
I think that's the first time that he made a mistake. Oh, he must be getting a little bit tired in his old age. A little bit too tired to win every last one of his battles. But we'll make sure that your final turn will be victorious. We have that one final mole waiting in the tall grass. So on the next turn, and on your very final day, you should be able to have a one last big feast. Now I guess that's the end of our turns. So we have a couple of babies to meet. Let's go back here to see how Serena's baby will fare first. It looks like it is a female. Oh no, and she's sick too. Oh, the poor thing. But she does have the most gorgeous purple eyes. And not only that, but she also appears to have the peacock tail inside her active trait. I don't think that's supposed to happen. Let's see if she has any tail at all. Oh my goodness. Oh, we just had a completely tailless creature born in our peacock tribe. Oh, you poor things are having the absolute worst luck, aren't you? You just can't shake the curse of the peacock tail. I suppose that means you might need to look for more help soon. Maybe it'll be time for your family to migrate to some other tribe. They could always go toward Van Kier's troops. Not sure if they'd be so willing to take them in since they don't have a way to pick from the poison berries. But they do have the healing fruit. And they also have Sirius, who could help them out with this purring. But if that doesn't suit their fancy, they could go to the Oracle's Oasis instead. As long as they can maneuver past all of that potential danger in the grasses, they will have Dimitri, who can help them with his purring too. And there are so many pursed out creatures on these shores. As long as they don't get too close to the mermaids, they should be free to keep their babies nice and healthy. The one drawback is that this sick baby could potentially pass it to her parents. But at the same time, we don't want to leave her alone. I don't think we have the bluebird in our skies. But that being said, the bluebird was so interested in Dasher. I would hate to risk potentially losing this baby to the skies. So the next name on my list is Lauren. Welcome to our tribe, little one. Hopefully we can find a way to sustain you, missing tail and all. Though she is very, very pretty. She's our very first creature in this tribe to wear the violet eyes, so she is a special one regardless. I guess we have no choice but to make sure that these two breed again. And we'll just have to cross our fingers that the illness doesn't cause them to pass away too early. Desperate times in the Peacock Kingdom. This is really all that they can manage to keep themselves alive. But things are much more calm over here. Where it looks like a beautiful white little bird was just born. Oh, she is gorgeous. Solaris is going to be so happy. He has his own little daughter to train now. His school is going to be jam-packed. So your name, quite fittingly, will be Moonlight. Welcome to our tribe too, little one. And in the next episode, we'll have you flutter on over to join Mist and Solaris. Now that they finally have their second chums, these babies are ready to stretch their wings once and for all. I suppose before we end the episode, we could have Mist just hop into one of these trees. I am quite curious to see if there's anything different about them. We know that we can shake down the acorns from the oak tree, but we've never tried flying on to one of these before. So you're going to be the very first one. She can definitely sing from high atop this tree. Oh, but it looks like she can also crack open some acacia nuts. That's interesting. So it looks like the acacia trees have a food source all their own. And it gives us just one piece of food. Okay, so not quite as exciting as I was hoping. But it's still a pretty cool discovery. And it just goes to show that there's still so much more we have to discover in the skies. So Solaris, in the next episode... Your school of flying will officially be open. I hope you're ready, little guy. You're going to have quite a few birds to wrangle. But for now, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye, guys!